This is Brian Ether, Sikkim 365, here today talking Baylor baseball. Levi Carraway, new hire, Mitch Thompson. Got some new commits, some players staying. We'll discuss it today here on uh, this first podcast, video cast, wherever yeah. you want to call it, about Baylor baseball. So, Levi, you know, been covering baseball for us here at Sikkim 365. How did you feel yesterday when we went through the, uh, the presser with Mitch Thompson? I mean – after the fact, like just listening to him, and I mean, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty soft guy when it comes to that, and so I just kept seeing him tear up, and I was like, wow, that's kind of that's kind of getting to me. And he really, he really made me feel like bought into what he was saying. I was really feeling the, um, he kept preaching being together, and that really stuck out to me. And, um, and you know, it was just it was really impressive. I think he he has such a magnetic personality where he's gonna get people into the program he's going to get people into the heart of the order to donate money and that's something that hasn't been there in recent years and so that was kind of one of my main takeaways is I was just really excited yeah I mean I've known Mitch I guess I mean close to 20 years now so it's it's something that that's good to hear from you because you know I I don't want to be biased by knowing the guy Mm -hmm. right and I've known him and uh, see how he builds relationships, how he built relationships in recruiting, the guys that he recruited back in you know in the glory years from you know 98 to 2012 and uh, you know, obviously the program saw a little bit of a fall off after he left, and that was a lot of the recruiting uh, you know, that was done at that time. And, you know, seeing it, watching it, you know, that's Mitch. You know, mm-hmm. And that was something that was really great to watch. And I think, com- you know, connecting the community is going to be mm-hmm. one of the biggest things that he does uh, at Baylor and also connecting with recruits and their families. And if the equivalency happens, which – you know, we'll know here pretty soon, then Bader is able to allow, you know, give 25 more scholarships. What can he do with that when he was able to do that, you know, take him to the College World Series in 05, um, and then the Super Regional team that was put together in 12, what is going to, you know, what can he do? Mm-hmm. You know, sort of the handcuffs are off a little bit of, you know, not paying $50,000 a year to go to Bader and play mm-hmm. uh, and going and just having, you know, a scholarship. So that's one of the things that, you know, that's probably a year down the road. But is that that's something he can sell now, mm-hmm. and then if the NCAA is going to do that, and I think that is the road we're headed. Uh, his his path gets a little easier, mm-hmm. especially with you know the way Baylor is is doing uh, in all sports because you can sell it. Because back when they were winning in uh, you know ninety eight to to twelve, there wasn't really much success in any <laughs> other sport uh-huh. outside of women's basketball. And I don't, and I love women's basketball as well, but to baseball players. They love football, in my experience. Mm-hmm. So, what else? What else are you, you hearing, or what else are you thinking about on uh, about the hire? Um, really, one thing that really stood out to me um, was Mitch just kept talking about connections within the state of Texas, having great relationships with high school coaches, and I think at one point he was like, "This is the best state in the country for." playing baseball and if you look at our you look at our roster you know there's a lot of California guys a lot of kind of kind of all over the place um and so it was just great to to hear that because the previous coaching staff did not take full advantage of that and that's something I'm really going to be excited about Mitch is higher with is uh he's going to be hitting the state of Texas really hard and so that's going to be super exciting yeah and I think that is something I mean obviously we've seen one commitment from MCC since his hiring there's a possibility of another. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's one MCC player that was already committed to Baylor and who's ecstatic that Mitch is coming. And that is something I think you'll see uh, some people around the Central Texas area. I mean, Midway usually has a decent program, and that could be something that, you know, Mitch does go out and do. Uh, but the other junior colleges in the state mm-hmm. are are loaded. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking about Blend, Cisco, Weatherford. Any of those junior colleges are loaded with players that send many guys to the to the major leagues mm-hmm. and the minors. Obviously, uh, getting the majors is very difficult, but filling up the minor league with Baylor players, you know, it ups your odds. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about Arkansas. How many players from MCC are on Arkansas? I think their best player is yep. an MCC player. That guy could have been at Baylor, mm-hmm. was not, um, and you know. You're going to see a different breed of player, a different type of player, I think a different weightlifting system mm-hmm. uh, with more power uh, mm-hmm. for the teams in offense. You know, you're not going to really be playing small ball anymore. And that's uh, – it's going to be hopefully returned to those 90, 1998 to two, <laughs> 2012 teams. But Mitch is and Steve, and I you know, love them both. They're, they're very different men, uh, very different approaches. 
Mitch is going to have some more fire, mm-hmm. and Steve was more stoic. Mm-hmm. And I think that probably is one of the reasons in the end why they had the split. Um, what are you hearing on any of the players, the possibility, you know, coming back or leaving or anything, anything like that? Are you hearing anything on the, in that end? Yeah, so I, I talked to somebody yesterday, and he seemed to think that the four people that have already transferred that are pretty – Pretty, um, pretty sold on weighing their MLB options. Like they could sign, and so it was more so, um, like we talked about previously, leverage per se. Um, you know, the fact that you could always lean back, like, oh, I, I transferred to LSU and stuff, and stuff like that. And so I think there's always hope that a few of those guys may be coming back, but that's not set in stone or anything. And then another thing I was really excited about was uh, was Casey Newman is for sure coming back, and so he was a player that. You know, when he – when he in those rare moments where he got starts, he popped. Yeah. And any time the ball came off his bat, you're like, that's going to go pretty far or something along those lines. And so he always had – always had really good at-bats. But when you don't – when you don't, like, get consecutive days of starting and stuff, it's it's hard to get in a rhythm. And I don't think he ever got in a rhythm. And at one, I think he was still probably hitting around 300. Even though he had far fewer at-bats, he's – he was arguably probably the sh- – strongest player on the team um power wise and he just didn't get the at bats like the rest of them and so and now that we're kind of we're past the fact i put this on the boards but like platooning the dhs was was not was no not I, mean, I agree i think that you know i think newman you know deserved his shot to start i mean he was but you were platooning with the guy that was hitting what 180 yeah both it, of them yeah of them. and and and, I, and he's hitting 300 so i did you know that was one of the the things i mean obviously we and during the game threads, you know, what's going on here? Why isn't he mm-hmm. getting more playing time? It's good that he will be returning uh, and give some pop in the middle of the lineup. Mm-hmm. I do think he is one of the more powerful players that's on the team at this point. And, you know, the four guys who transferred out, Nevin, um, McKenzie, uh, Richardson, and Pineda, mm-hmm. yeah, I think the leverage, you know, uh, I haven't heard if they've enrolled yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they don't have an enrolled, maybe Mitch talks to, talks to you know, all four and sees – if the possibility of coming back, because until you enroll, you're still free to come back, because mm-hmm. um, the uh, agreement's binding with the school, not binding with the player. When you do you know, hit the transfer mm-hmm. portal, so that's going to be interesting to watch if he can bring anybody back. And if you wanted a Richardson back or you know McKenzie, we've always known was going to yeah. be was going to go to the pros. Uh, Nevin most likely as well, but mm-hmm. it's a Pineda or a Richardson, somebody that they can get back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Altman is the one from NCC that did commit after who's an infielder, so that sort of tells you that mm-hmm. one of those guys is going to be replaced because, you know, he's a middle infielder. Uh, somebody who hit, you know, had a good batting average at MCC and, uh, you know, started his career at Lamar. So that's going to be interesting to watch too. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to um, I'm trying to remember there was another guy's name. I, I know his Twitter handle is like Scooby or something like that, but I looked at his stats and I watched some of his film. He was really good. I yeah. can't remember what position. I don't know if he played third or – Corner outfield, but he looked really good. Um, a corner outfielder is needed. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah for sure. I mean, you're, then, you're rebuilding the essentially the entire the entire team, basically. the entire the entire outfield there. Yeah. Uh, if if McKenzie and Nevin are both gone, I mean, it's yeah. left the center and, and right, and then in Gonzalez was he a senior or is he? He's coming back. He is coming back, yeah. but he was hitting 182, so yeah. he's going to he's going to work on that swing. Back. And Shane Vogel really stepped up towards yes. the end of the year. He kind of. He was just on the roster for two thirds of the year, and then he finally got some chances when when Wesner broke his hand. And you know he wasn't he wasn't hitting for a high average, but every single at bat he fought. Um, I don't I don't ever really remember him going up there swinging first pitch or weak contact or sh- striking on three pitches. He really would battle, and that was something that the lineup didn't really have. And so even though he was maybe hitting like two sixty two seventy. Anytime he was at bat, I was like, yeah, that, that's pretty impressive. I mean, your bat never doesn't tell at all. I mean, if, mm-hmm. you're, if you're on base percentages. Yeah, up, and his can, was really high. Yeah, you can get on – if you battle and work for walks, getting on base is the name of the game and, you know, getting driven in. And something that didn't happen a whole lot in <laughs> yeah. you know, the 2021 season was getting driven in. And yeah. uh, I think that it will – or 2022 season, I'm sorry, is something that – 2021 as well, I guess. But uh, the offense is going to change. Yeah. I think uh, – and then the hiring of Leverton at the pitching coach, uh, the familiarity between Mitch and him, uh, you know, working together at MCC, and then him going to Little Rock uh, for the one year. He is already back in Waco. Uh, I talked to him the other day, um, and, you know, he's excited. Uh, he's back. Um, 
he never sold the house, so they <laughs> moved right back in, and here he comes. And uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch the recruiting philosophy of him mm-hmm. as well. Uh, with so many players today throwing in the 90s, mm-hmm. uh, you're going to have an opportunity you know, to build up players and have them come in and uh, and work on them. So that's, that's again, it's, it's mm-hmm. going to be it's going to be exciting to watch how they manage the roster. Uh, we do know that there's going to be turnover, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, some players who didn't play, maybe they were – we don't know why they weren't playing under, under the old staff, but they weren't playing. Mm-hmm. So that, that either tells you they weren't they weren't good enough to play, or the guy ahead was just that much better, mm-hmm. um, or they're a development. So uh, we do know there's been decommits to the 23 class mm-hmm. and the 24 class. We've seen some guys that no longer list Baylor baseball as as a commit any longer. So were they told to do that, or are they just? Mm-hmm. Not going to do that anymore. So that's that's something else to watch. But um, anything else you have to add? Or I don't. I don't really think that the as many people as were projected to go in the portal. There hasn't really been as much transition as I thought there was going to be. And I think. Well, I was hoping, like you know, selfishly, I was hoping that these guys would at least listen to what Mitch has to say before they kind of made that decision. And I think, I think if you have a sit down one on one conversation with Mitch you're going to buy into what he has to say, and you're going to be like, I think I can stay here um, and see myself better off than where I was. And so I think that's going to be the case for a lot of those those guys who didn't get much playing time because, I mean, even in the, f- the few moments I had one-on-one with Mitch, I was like, yeah, I, I, I like what he has to say. I'm going to I'm gonna stay here. So. so you can see how he's going to be a decent recruiter. Yes, I can, I can tell from the few interactions I've had with him that he is going to be a great recruiter. Okay. Well, this is Brian Etheridge, Levi Caraway, Sikkim 365. Wrapping up our first, or whatever we're going to call this, (laughs) baseball. We'll get us a title sooner or later for it. And thank you very much.